The Royal Observatory, Greenwich, Raj, known as the Old Royal Observatory from 1957 to 1998, when the working Royal Greenwich Observatory, RGO, moved from Greenwich to Hurst Monsa, is an observatory situated on a hill in Greenwich Park, overlooking the River Thames. It played a major role in the history of astronomy and navigation, and is best known for the fact that the prime meridian passes through it, and thereby gave its name to Greenwich Mean Time. The Raj has the IAU Observatory Code of 000, the first in the list. Raj, the National Maritime Museum, the Queen's House and Cuddy Sark are collectively designated Royal Museums Greenwich. The observatory was commissioned in 1675 by King Charles II, with the foundation stone being laid on 10 August. The site was chosen by Sir Christopher Wren. At that time the King also created the position of Astronomer Royal, to serve as the director of the observatory and to apply himself with the most exact care and diligence to the rectifying of the tables of the motions of the heavens, and the places of the fixed stars, so as to find out the so much desired longitude of places for the perfecting of the art of navigation." He appointed John Flamsteed as the first astronomer royal. The building was completed in the summer of 1676. The building was often called Flamsteed House, in reference to its first occupant. The scientific work of the observatory was relocated elsewhere in stages in the first half of the 20th century, and the Greenwich site is now maintained almost exclusively as a museum, although the Amat telescope became operational for astronomical research in 2018. History Topic Chronology sixteen seventy five to twenty two June Royal Observatory founded sixteen seventy five to ten August construction began seventeen fourteen Longitude Act established the Board of Longitude and Longitude Rewards the Astronomer Royal was, until the board was dissolved in 1828, always an ex officio commissioner of longitude. 1767 Astronomer Royal Naville Maskelyne began publication of the Nautical Almanac, based on observations made at the observatory. 1818 Oversight of the Royal Observatory was transferred from the Board of Ordnance to the Board of Admiralty. At that time, the observatory was charged with maintaining the Royal Navy's marine chronometers. 1833 Daily time signals began, marked by dropping a time ball. 1899 The new physical observatory, now known as the South Building, was completed. 1924 hourly time signals Greenwich time signal from the Royal Observatory were first broadcast on the 5th of February 1948 office of the Astronomer Royal was moved to Hearst Monsa 1957 Royal Observatory completed its move to Hearst Monsa becoming the Royal Greenwich Observatory RGO The Greenwich site is renamed the Old Royal Observatory 1990 RGO moved to Cambridge. 1998 RGO closed. Greenwich site is returned to its original name, the Royal Observatory, Greenwich, and is made part of the National Maritime Museum. 2011 The Greenwich Museums, including the Raj, become collectively the Royal Museums Greenwich. Topic. Site. There had been significant buildings on this land since the reign of William I. Greenwich Palace, on the site of the present-day Maritime Museum, was the birthplace of both Henry VIII and his daughters Mary I and Elizabeth I. The Tudors used Greenwich Castle, which stood on the hilltop that the observatory presently occupies, as a hunting lodge. Greenwich Castle was reportedly a favorite place for Henry VIII to house his mistresses, so that he could easily travel from the palace to see them. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Establishment. The establishment of a royal observatory was proposed in 1674 by Sir Jonas Moore who, in his role as Surveyor General of the Ordnance, persuaded King Charles II to create the observatory, with John Flamsteed installed as its director. The Ordnance Office was given responsibility for building the observatory, with Moore providing the key instruments and equipment for the observatory at his own personal cost. Flamsteed House, the original part of the observatory, was designed by Sir Christopher Wren, probably assisted by Robert Hooke, and was the first purpose-built scientific research facility in Britain. It was built for a cost of £520, 20 pounds over budget, out of largely recycled materials on the foundations of Duke Humphreys Tower, the forerunner of Greenwich Castle, which resulted in the alignment being 13 degrees away from true north, somewhat to Flamsteed's chagrin. Moore donated two clocks, built by Thomas Tompion, which were installed in the 20-foot high octagon room, the principal room of the building. They were of unusual design, each with a pendulum 13 feet meters in length mounted above the clock face, giving a period of 4 seconds and an accuracy, then unparalleled, of 7 seconds per day. The original observatory housed the Astronomer Royal, his assistant and his family as well as the scientific instruments to be used by Flamsteed in his work on stellar tables. Over time the institution became a more established institution, thanks to its links to long-lasting government boards the Board of Ordnance and Board of Longitude and oversight by a Board of Visitors, founded in 1710 and made up of the President and members of the Council of the Royal Society. By the later 18th century it incorporated additional responsibilities such as publishing the Nautical Almanac, advising government on technical matters, disseminating time, making meteorological and magnetic observations and undertaking astrophotography and spectroscopy. The physical site and the numbers of staff increased over time as a result. Greenwich Meridian British astronomers have long used the Royal Observatory as a basis for measurement. Four separate meridians have passed through the buildings, defined by successive instruments. The basis of longitude, the meridian that passes through the airy transit circle, first used in 1851, was adopted as the world's prime meridian at the International Meridian Conference on the 22nd of October 1884. Voting took place on the 13th of October. Subsequently, nations across the world used it as their standard for mapping and timekeeping. The prime meridian was marked by a brass later replaced by stainless steel strip in the observatory's courtyard once the buildings became a museum in 1960, and, since 16 December 1999, has been marked by a powerful green laser shining north across the London night sky. Since the first triangulation of Great Britain in the period 1783–1853, Ordnance Survey maps have been based on an earlier version of the Greenwich Meridian, defined by the transit instrument of James Bradley. When the airy circle 5.79 meters to the east became the reference for the meridian, the difference resulting from the change was considered small enough to be neglected. When a new triangulation was done between 1936 and 1962, scientists determined that in the Ordnance Survey system the longitude of the International Greenwich Meridian was not 0 degrees but 0 degrees 000.417, about 8 meters east. Besides the change of the reference line, imperfections of the surveying system added another discrepancy to the definition of the origin, so that the Bradley line itself is now 0 degrees 00 East of the Ordnance Survey Zero Meridian about 2.3 meters, this old astronomical prime meridian has been replaced by a more precise prime meridian. 
When Greenwich was an active observatory, geographical coordinates were referred to a local oblate spheroid called a datum known as a geoid, whose surface closely matched local mean sea level. Several datums were in use around the world, all using different spheroids, because mean sea level undulates by as much as 100 meters worldwide. Modern geodetic reference systems, such as the World Geodetic System and the International Terrestrial Reference Frame, use a single oblate spheroid, fixed to the Earth's gravitational center. The shift from several local spheroids to one worldwide spheroid caused all geographical coordinates to shift by many meters, sometimes as much as several hundred meters. The prime meridian of these modern reference systems is 102.5 meters east of the Greenwich Astronomical Meridian represented by the stainless steel strip, which is now 5.31 arcseconds west. The modern location of the airy transit is 51 degrees 28 minutes 40.1 seconds north 0 degrees 0 minutes 5.3 seconds winter national time from the end of the 19th century until UT1 was based on Simon Newcomb's equations, giving a mean sun about 0 0.18 seconds behind UT1 the equivalent of 2.7 arcseconds as of 2013, it coincided in 2013 with a meridian half Halfway between Aries Circle and the IERS origin, 51 degrees 28 minutes 40.1247 seconds north 0 degrees 0 minutes 2.61 seconds west. <laughs> Greenwich Mean Time and the Time Ball Greenwich Mean Time GMT was until 1954 based on celestial observations made at Greenwich, and later on observations made at other observatories. GMT was formally renamed as Universal Time in 1935, but is still commonly referred to as GMT. It is now calculated from observations of extra-galactic radio sources. To help mariners at the port and others in line of sight of the observatory to synchronize their clocks to GMT, astronomer Royal John Pond installed a very visible time ball that drops precisely at 1 p.m. 1300 every day atop the observatory in 1833. Initially it was dropped by an operator, from 1852 it was released automatically via an electric impulse from the Shepherd Master Clock. The ball is still dropped daily at 1300, GMT in winter, BST in summer. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Bomb attack of 1894. The observatory underwent an attempted bombing on the 15th of February 1894. This was possibly the first international terrorist incident in Britain. The bomb was accidentally detonated while being held by 26-year-old French anarchist Marshal Bourdain in Greenwich Park, near the observatory building. Bourdain died about 30 minutes later. It is not known why he chose the observatory, or whether the detonation was intended to occur elsewhere. Novelist Joseph Conrad used the incident in his novel The Secret Agent. Early 20th century During most of the 20th century, the Royal Greenwich Observatory was not at Greenwich. The last time that all departments were there was 1924, in that year electrification of the railways affected the readings of the magnetic and meteorological departments, and the magnetic observatory moved to Obinger. Prior to this, the observatory had had to insist that the electric trams in the vicinity could not use an earth return for the traction current. After the onset of World War II in 1939, many departments were temporarily evacuated out of range of German bombers to Obinger, Bradford on Avon, Bristol, and Bath, and activities in Greenwich were reduced to the bare minimum. On 15 October 1940, during the Blitz, the courtyard gates were destroyed by a direct bomb hit. 
the wall above the gate clock collapsed, and the clock's dial was damaged. The damage was repaired after the war. <laughs> Hurstmonsa Castle After the Second World War, in 1947, the decision was made to move to Hurstmonsa Castle and 320 adjacent acres 1.3 square kilometres, 70 kilometres south-southeast of Greenwich near Hailsham in East Sussex, due to light pollution in London. The observatory was officially known as the Royal Greenwich Observatory, Hurstmonsa. Although the astronomer Royal Harold Spencer Jones moved to the castle in 1948, the scientific staff did not move until the observatory buildings were completed, in 1957. Shortly thereafter, other previously dispersed departments were reintegrated at Hurstmonsa. The Isaac Newton Telescope was built at Hurstmonsa in 1967, but was moved to Roque de los Muchachos Observatory in Spain's Canary Islands in 1979. In 1990 the RGO moved again, to Cambridge. Following a decision of the Particle Physics and Astronomy Research Council, it closed in 1998. Her Majesty's Nautical Almanac Office was transferred to the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory, on the Harwell Science and Innovation Campus, Chilton, Oxfordshire after the closure. Other work went to the UK Astronomy Technology Centre in Edinburgh. The castle grounds became the home of the International Study Centre of Queen's University, Kingston, Canada and the Observatory Science Centre, which is operated by an educational charity science project. <laughs> Greenwich Site returns to active use In 2018 the Annie Maunder Astrographic Telescope Amat was installed at the Raj in Greenwich. Amat is a cluster of four separate instruments, to be used for astronomical research, it had achieved first light by June 2018. A 14-inch reflector can take high-resolution images of the Sun, Moon and planets, an instrument dedicated to observing the Sun and instrument with interchangeable filters to view distant nebulae at different optical wavelengths, a general-purpose telescope, the telescopes and the works at the site required to operate them cost about £150,000, from grants, museum members and patrons, and public donations. Observatory Museum The observatory buildings at Greenwich became a museum of astronomical and navigational tools, which is part of the Royal Museum's Greenwich. Notable exhibits include John Harrison's Sea Watch, the H-4, which received a large reward from the Board of Longitude, and his three earlier marine timekeepers, all four are the property of the Ministry of Defence. Many additional horological artifacts are displayed, documenting the history of precision timekeeping for navigational and astronomical purposes, including the mid-20th century Russian-made FM. Fedchenko clock the most accurate pendulum clock ever built in multiple copies. It also houses the astronomical instruments used to make meridian observations and the 28-inch equatorial grub refracting telescope of 1893, the largest of its kind in the UK. The shepherd clock outside the observatory gate is an early example of an electric slave clock. In February 2005 a £16 million redevelopment comprising a new planetarium and additional display galleries and educational facilities was started. The Raj reopened on 25 May 2007 with the new 120-seat Peter Harrison Planetarium. <laughs> <laughs> 